Deborah Messing, the 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 ninth season of Will and Grace, the first revival season is is in the history books. Um, coming back, was there something that you wanted specifically from this revival um, when you guys started? Well, the first thing that that um, uh, was very very important to me was that we were able to do the same exact show that we did before and meaning that from its inception, its DNA, it was provocative and it, it pushed limits and it talked about what's happening right now in pop culture, right now in politics. And obviously the world is a very different place now than when we were on. And I just wanted reassurance that we could be our show and that we wouldn't be um, muted in any way. And once we were given assurances that we had free reign to be Will and Grace. Then I, the only request I made was that that Grace be a feminist. It felt like like a natural progression from from who we knew her to be, and it just feels like in in this world that she would sort of own that more and and be more um, vocal about her feelings. And it's it's so interesting after after being off the off the air uh, for that amount of time. Um, coming back to it, was it instantly easy? Even though you know you wanted it to be the show, was there anything different about the way you guys approach it or the way it felt when you were doing it? Oh gosh, it it was not instantaneous. I know that for I think Eric and Megan both said that it was instantaneous for them. For me, it was not. Um, I really felt. The 11 years and um, you know I had just come off doing a drama you know and I hadn't done a you know a, a sitcom since in 11 years and so part of me felt tentative in terms of just like jumping into Grace's skin again I think part of that was because I was like who is she after 11 years like where is she now what is she doing and um, and I, I think it took me to about the third episode. I think, I think once, I think once Megan and I got into the tank of water, <laughs> I think that was the turning point for me. That was when it felt like, you know, all the all the concern and trepidation was gone, and that it was like, oh yes, this is. I feel her again, and and that was a relief and um, and a joy. Well, let let's talk about that 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 shower bath scene uh, in the tank, um, because you know where did that idea come from? Was was that always in the script from the beginning? Yes, yes, it is actually a uh, a nod to uh, something that um, Lucy and Ethel did uh, fifty years ago. They had a similar a similar situation and. Um, and Max just, you know, he wanted to do a little wink. And any chance to to give us physical comedy um, is is always embraced. I'm like, I'm really hungry for it. And he just thought, oh, this is this is the situation that that makes sense because she is an interior designer. And um, but the amazing thing is, we could never rehearse it. Like that was the crazy thing because because it was an 18 foot tank of water, and it took a while to fill up, and um, so we had to just sort of pretend we were in the water all week, and then we shot it the night before we went in front of an audience, and they said, "All right, get in," and Megan and I were in there for three and a half hours, and we figured it out on the fly, and they, you know. You know, because you've seen the show, it's it's very unusual compared to other sitcoms because, you know, there's a gaggle of eleven writers, and after after one take, they have a scrum, and then they run in and they're like, cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. Here's your new joke, your new joke, your new joke, and then go, and we do that, and then usually immediately after they're like, okay, cut that, cut that, cut that, and to be in a tank of water, <laughs> there, you can't even stand. Um, you know, and to get those changes on the fly, it, it, it definitely felt like, you know, it upped the challenge for us. 
but I also think that by the end, Megan and I were like, do we have to get out? You know, because it was just, it was fun. My only request was that it wasn't cold water. <laughs> that was actually gonna be my next question. Please tell me that it was heated. Yes, because I learned my lesson from back in the day when we did the exploding water balloon episode. Um, the water bra. The water bra. Um, and uh, because, you know, the, the studio is 55 degrees because it's always funnier when it's cold. And, um, and something went wrong with the tube that went into my bra that was, you know, going to explode. And all the water backed up on me and soaked me head to toe and it was cold water and we had to do it over and over and over again and then it broke down and then they needed a half hour to and I was like by the end I was just like and um I was I was out of work with bronchitis for like two weeks after that I got really sick and I was like okay I learned my lesson warm water please <laughs> um one of the things that that you mentioned you know, you do the tank thing without the studio audience and then, but the, the studio audience has always really been a really important component of the show, it seems like. And what's always interesting to me, having seen several tapings is is how much you guys interact. Can you talk about that, that importance of that back and forth between you guys and the studio audience? Uh, it really is everything for us. I think it's because the four of us all have our roots in theater. And because we come from a place where it is, it, it is a kind of dialogue back and forth as you're acting and you're, you're being fed, you know, energy and you're giving off energy, um, you know, for the four of us, it just felt like, oh, we understand this in the context of theater. And, and I think maybe that's why the writers kept rewriting you know from the very beginning is because they saw that that we did change on the fly um but it is you know it is a live audience there is no laugh track like people still think that there are laugh tracks and i was trying to figure out why and i think i figured it out i think it's because you know people laugh so hard and for so long that they have to cut it off in order to make time. And so because it's cut, it sounds canned. But um, but it's totally live. And it 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 there's just an electric energy that happens. And it's like, is this joke gonna land? You know, and we do it and it dies. And we're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, from the very beginning, you know, we 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 realized that we had to be really brave. You know, because it felt, even though everything is scripted, it felt very improvisational. Um, you know, probably 20% of what you see on television, it's the first time those words are coming out of our mouths. Um, so we never rehearsed it before. So um, there, you know, but, but that's what made the idea of coming back after all of these years, you know, so um, just just exciting for me you know I grew up I grew up with I love Lucy and um, you know I I love old school comedies that make you laugh out loud and you know obviously the industry has changed a lot and there's there's the the dramedy single camera dramedies and you know I went on to do starter wife and I loved doing it but it's an entirely different animal and um, and I, I was feeling like, will I ever get the opportunity to try that again? Or is that sort of, you know, a, a relic? Um, so to be able to come back and to make people laugh in the moment and to walk down the street and for people to stop us and say, thank you so much for coming back. You know, I, I laugh out loud in my living room. Um, that's that's the whole reason why we do it. Um, I want to go back to um, to your Emmy win. We are an awards website, and you know, Will and Grace holds a, a very unique place in television history. The fact that that 
you are one of only three shows to where all of the main actors won Emmys, and you were the last one to do it uh, in 2003. Uh, take me back to that night. Uh, did you go in thinking you had a shot? You had submitted the the kid stays out of the picture, which features that epic fight yeah. uh, between between uh, Will and Grace. Um, take us back to what that night was like. Um, well, it was a very interesting night because I was nine weeks pregnant and nobody knew it except my husband, my mother, and um, my costume designer and the designer um, because they had to keep letting the dress out. So, you know, part of my mind was, can are people going to tell that I'm pregnant? Um, but you know what? I really, I went into that not thinking that I had a chance. I thought that I had a chance. If it was going to happen at all, I thought it was going to happen with um, – the, the two-parter of um, back in the 80s. Yeah, Lowe's in the mid-80s. Lowe's in the mid-80s. Um, and I think Eric won for that one. Yeah. Yes. And I thought, you know, that is such a showpiece, you know, that there's so much happening emotionally, learning out, he, learning he's gay, but it was also hilarious. And, you know, it was two parts, so there was more to watch. And I thought, that's going to be the one. And when it didn't happen, you know, I thought, okay, you know what, it's, it's, it's probably not going to happen for me, you know, and I, I just was grateful to be nominated, you know, I know, I know that it's a cliche, but um, even to this day, with the nominations that I've gotten, when it happens, it still feels like the first time, it still feels like such an incredible, um, honor and you know i think at that point i just thought you know the the, the women who i'm in this group with um the, the, there's they're all so great in their old own way i i couldn't begrudge anybody for for you know their name being called over mine so when my name was called i was i was shocked i mean you, you i think if you you see it played back you see that i'm just like what <laughs> and Megan and Sean they were like helping me up and I I mean I literally I, I hit the, the microphone I you know I was an <laughs> idiot um yeah but that was an amazing that was a really really amazing night so as we go into this this Emmy season um what what have been the highlights have there been episodes from this season that you just think are your favorites or that you think are really strong uh, contenders? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I really loved the episode um, towards the end of the season when Grace dates three generations of men in the same family. Uh, to me, that felt like a Noel Coward play. Um, and again, I'm a theater baby, you know, and, and it just was, it was, so much fun, you know, just having Grace having to juggle all of these things at once. It just, I felt it was, it, it was a really, really fun, strong episode. I also, for totally different reasons, I love the Christmas episode. You know, I just thought it was, it was, um, I thought that it was uh, ambitious. You know, I thought, you know, the set design and the costume design and, you know, I just thought that it was um, it was unexpected. Um, but the other episode that I think is is one of the best is the quinceanera, the the funeral episode. I feel like you know that was another one that was was really beautifully mo modulized. Modulized is that a word? Modulated. Sure. Modulated. <laughs> um, it was modulated between you know you know deep brief, real deep emotion and crazy hilarity. And, you know, I think that's what makes Will and Grace special is, is, you know, the writers, you know, it's a writer's medium The you know, the writers are, ha are able to find that, that sweet spot where both can coexist. And I think that's what we try to bring to life every week. So when we left off uh, at the at the end of the season, um, hijinks between <laughs> ensue with, uh, I mean, with <laughs> I, uh, your your father. I, 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 first of all, I mean, how lucky are you 
with the parents, the people who have played your parents uh, on this show. I mean, the the late great Debbie Reynolds and yeah. and now Robert Klein. Robert <laughs> Klein, you know, it's 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 wonderful on so many levels because he's a legend, but also he was my dad on the Mysteries of Laura for two seasons. Um, so it was my idea. Um, I was like, what about Robert Klein, you know, cause we, beca we became, you know, bonded and close. And, and I knew that if he came on, it would already be there. And I d hadn't realized at the time that Robert Klein and Jimmy Burroughs were in the same class at Yale university. Really? Yes. So it, 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 you know, it all felt very meant to be. And and then but, the whole storyline with with <laughs> Will's mother, Blythe Banner, and yeah. getting married and, and you two standing in the hallway at the end of the at the end of the season, basically possibly becoming step siblings. I, I literally when I read that, I I this is what I, I was like what? <laughs> what? and I thought that's genius. That's genius. It it's crazy. But um, I realized, I was like, oh, you know what? That's what they do. They like write themselves into a corner and then they're like, all right, figure your way out of it. Um, I, I thought it was, I thought it was great. And, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but if it happens, I mean, that's a whole other, you know, dynamic that Will and Grace are going to have to deal with. And the two families, I mean, you saw you know, my family coming together for Debbie Reynolds' birthday episode. Um, and, and that isn't the, the healthiest of families. Um, and it's always funny, you know, to get a very neurotic Jewish family and a very uptight waspy family together. Um, we did that back in the day as well. So, um, you know, who knows? I'm praying for like the most dysfunctional Thanksgiving episode ever. Right? So am I. So am I. So, you know, the show has, you know, been very successful. You know, you've you've got two more seasons uh, that you guys are going to do. Um, how far do you want to take this? How far do you conceive that this could go? Um, for, on a purely selfish uh, need-to-know basis, of course. That's so sweet. Um, you know, uh, all of this has been so insane. Um, first of all, we never imagined after 11 years that it would even be conceivable that we would be able to get together because literally when we came back for that um, campaign little video, it was the first time in 10 years that the four of us were in the same room wow. in 10 years. And it wasn't because we don't love each other. It was because, you know, I was doing a TV show in New York and Eric was doing a TV show in, in Canada and Megan was singing all around the country and, and Sean was being a producer in LA. And I mean, we were never in the same place at the same time, all four of us. And so the idea of, oh, okay, making this happen, especially because I live in New York now and I'm a single mom. Um, but when they came after we got all the views and we realized that you know, our fans were, were alive and well, and um, that there was a whole new generation of fans that were discovering us. Um, you know, we sat down and I said, okay, 10. 10 feels like the right number. You know, I'll be able to, to be here and enjoy this and then be with my son. And we all were like, 10's perfect. And first table read, you're picked up for a season. And then, you know, the last one, oh, two more at 18. And, and uh, I, at every point, I've just been sort of stunned because I, I just, I mean, it's never been done before. You know, a primetime television show has never come back a decade later and had a new run picking up. And, um, and so I feel blessed. I feel privileged to be able to come back and to to be in Grace's shoes 11 years later, it's a whole new challenge. Um, and to work with these people, I mean, again, it's a cliche, but they really they really are family. And I would say 80% of our crew are from the original run, which I think says a lot about you know the dynamic on set the first time. 
Um, so I am, now I'm just trying to be open and being like, you know what? I can't predict anything. Every time I try to make a plan, it gets blown up. So now I'm just like, I want it to run as long as we are making people laugh and we are being, we are being original and fresh and current. And that's all you can ask for. Uh, Deborah Messing, thank you so much. Congratulations on the show. And, um, and we look forward to hopefully more years of Will and Grace uh, fabulousness. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye.